I believe the title for the message this morning I would call Following the Call. And I want you to turn to Matthew 4. Matthew 4, starting in verse 18. Father, I pray that you will give us ears to hear what you're speaking to us individually, ears to hear what you're speaking to us corporately. And Father, I pray that the seed of your word would be placed in our hearts and that our hearts this morning would contain good soil. That as we apply it to our lives, as we embrace it and adopt it and move with it and work with it, that Lord, the seed of your word would grow in us and take root and become strong in us. And Lord, that as we apply it, that Lord, not only would we be blessed, but Lord, that your kingdom would be advanced and extended. And so Lord, indeed, give us ears to hear what you're speaking to us. And we give you all praise and all glory in Jesus' name. Amen. It starts in verse 18. Jesus Walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. And Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus calls. Jesus calls. He calls Peter and Andrew. Pastor Ken, I want you to come here for a second. A couple weeks ago, he had me stand up. Amen. So turn around. No, 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 no. I called Pastor Kent. He's fixing his Bible. He's not thinking that he's going to have to do anything other than sit here. Amen. And that's good. Nothing wrong with this at all. And then I called him. And he had this look on his face like, what did I do now? Okay. But he responded, and he came up here, and he's here. I called, he responded. Amen? You need to get this. Thank you. That's all I need. <laughs> yeah, you can clap for him. When God calls, it's one thing. For us to respond to his call is something completely different. And God is calling Peter here. He's calling Andrew. He calls you and me. And he's identifying the people, the ones that he wants to have relationship with. He says, come and follow me. And it gets our attention. He's calling Peter out of one life. But he's calling him into another life. He's calling them from one state of being into another state of being. He's calling him out of his comfortable patterns. Peter's a fisherman. He knows how to fish. His daddy was a fisherman. His granddaddy was probably a fisherman. I mean, it may, the boat may have been in the, in the family for generations. It's how they made their living. It's what he knew how to do. And he's calling Peter and Andrew out of a comfort set of friends. He's calling him out of his social things. You know, many times we like to build our social structure and our friendships and the people that we're comfortable with and we live and do life together and it's great and it's wonderful and then God calls. He says, hey, come follow me. He calls Peter out of his financial support system. Peter was a fisherman. You know how he made his money? He caught fish. I'll bet they ate a lot of fish. They knew how to clean the fish. They knew, how, they knew fishing. And Jesus says, hey, come follow me. The call of God is radically different from following God in his calling. Calling is one thing. We discern it. We listen. We hear. It's still a small voice. God gets your attention in the service or he gets your attention one morning as you wake up or one night as you go to sleep. He places something in your spirit and it's like it's an assignment. You know that you know that this is what God is asking you to do. And maybe you have an encounter with God and it's, it's something where he stops you and, and it's abrupt. And it's like all of a sudden you realize, you know what, we've got to do this. God calls. God opens his mouth. And he speaks. And he speaks to us individually and differently. And yet we know that we know that there's a call on our lives. 
But following is completely different. Following means that we have to do something. Following means that we have to make some decisions that will cause us and promote us and propel us into what God has for us. We may have to sacrifice some things. The call of God says, this is what I want you to do. This is where I want you to be. But in order to do that, you may have to lay down some things. You may have to let go of one circle of friends and begin to embrace a new one. You may have to lay down a job so that you can embrace what God has for you. It may mean sacrifice. It may mean leaving things. But many times, there's a time between hearing God's call and actually following in it. There's time. Because some of us take a lot longer to make our, that decision than others. How many of you have ever experienced a call of God? If you just, just raise your hand. You, you, you know that God has asked you to do something or to be somewhere. Now, how many of you, now I'm not going to ask that. I was going to ask you how many of you are doing it. You know God has called you. And yet, following sometimes seems so hard. You know, the call of God is disruptive. The call of God disrupts our lives. The Lord said, I didn't come to, to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. And that comes to fruition in our lives many times. He doesn't come and call us in the comfort of what we're currently doing. His call is always outside of what we think is what's going to happen. It's like it's, he comes, he says, I know you've got it good. I even did that in your life. But now the next season is going to require that you lay down the former season and pick up the next one. And that's disruptive. See, many of us want the best of both worlds. We want an experience with God that doesn't really transform us. We want, I want to say that again. That was too good. Y'all are just sitting there this morning. I mean, it's still cold. Many of us want an experience with God that doesn't really change us. We want to get goosebumps. We want to have this nice, wonderful praise kind of time where we can just kind of lift our voice and sit down, hear a sermon, and go watch a football game. And that's the kind of God that we want. And God, he says, well, you know what? That's not me. Because when God begins to call you, when he says, he puts his finger, his hand upon you, and he calls you out, he says, I have a purpose, I have a plan, I have a destiny that I want you to fulfill. Don't get comfortable. We want to experience God, but we don't want it to change us. We want the call of God. We want what the call of God to fit into our current life. God, you can call me, but please call me in Sarasota. It's nice here. It's cold this morning, but most of the time it's wonderful, except for January or July and August, and then we just go north. Lord, you can call me, but, but, you can call me, but, don't ask me to do this. Don't ask me to go there. Lord, call me, but let it fit within my current circumstances because I figured that out. I like these circumstances. I don't want to be called into something that's going to stretch me. I don't want to be called to a people that may or may not listen. I don't want to be called into anything, Lord, that I'm not prepared for. It's disruptive. See, the call of God is the grace of God. The call of God comes. It, it just simply is part. You know, the Lord said, whoever will come, whosoever would come to me, come. We can come boldly before the throne because of the work of Jesus Christ. We come into his presence. We come into relationship with him. It's there. It's, it's constant. We can all come. And he calls us to come. And he beckons us to come. That's the grace of God. But... Following God, following the call, is the obedience to God. See, it takes faith to respond to the call of God. It takes faith because many times the call of God takes us out of our current situation into another situation. 
And many at times, it, we get scared to death. I can't teach that class. I've never taught anybody. I wasn't even very good in school. And we start giving excuses as to why. You know what, Lord, you want me to go where? I live in Florida. You're calling me to Alaska? Where is that anyway? I don't even know where that is. And isn't it cold up there, wherever it is? God, you're really calling me? This is a good situation I have. And the Lord says, I want you over here. I'm placing you. I've prepared you to be in another situation. I want you to be, to be over here. And we begin this conversation with God about why what he is asking us to do is not a good idea. And it would be so much better if you just called somebody else. The call of God is disruptive. And it takes believing that God knows us better than we even know ourselves. It takes us believing that God indeed is bigger than we even believe in ourselves. That believing in God and his strength and his wisdom and his power is even beyond us. Jesus tells Peter, he says, follow me. Follow me. Come away from your current life. Come away from what you've been doing and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus, he calls, he calls us to him. He says, come and follow me. Come and seek me. Come and learn of my ways. Come and read and study my word. Come and understand what I am about. Seek me, learn of me. You follow me. And he says, I will make. Our job is to follow. His job is to make us. I will make you in the, into the disciple that I purpose for you to be. I'll put in you what I desire and you need to have put in you. If you will follow me. It's not about you preparing yourself. It, you, you know, it's interesting. As we seek God, as we pray, as we worship, as we read the word, as we study, as we do that consistently, it's amazing how what God purposes and wants to put in us, we begin to change. We don't know exactly when it happens, but we realize, you know what? I'm different than I was a month ago. I'm different than I was two years ago. He says, I will make you into the business person I'm calling you to be. You don't think you know enough to get involved in that opportunity. But it's my opportunity that I'm putting before you. It's not up to you to necessarily figure it all out before you make the move. You follow me. I will go ahead of you and prepare the way. We follow, he will make. I'll make you into the husband. I'll make you into the wife that you need to be. Just follow me. Follow me is the call of God to each of us. I'll make you into the missionary that I'm calling you to be. You may not know the language, and it may be a missionary into the community where you're at. And you may feel ill-prepared, but I guarantee you that the call of God, the true call of God, will put you in a situation that you will need to depend upon God and not upon yourself. I will make you the leader. I will make you the church planner. I will make you. You follow me, Jesus is saying. You seek me. And I will make you. And many times Jesus calls us from our former lives. But many times, you know what? He saves our skill set. Because many times, there are things that he has legitimately put in our lives, talents he's given, gifts he's given. He's not asking us to leave those. He's just asking us to begin to apply those many times in a different setting or a different circumstance. Peter, he says, you're a fisherman. You know how to fish. I will make you a fisher of men. You're not going to fish for fish anymore, Peter. You're going to fish for men. You're going to interact and minister to people. You may be playing guitar in the bars. And Jesus 
touches you. He says, you know what? I'm not going to make you lay down your instrument. I want you to now use your instrument, your talent for my glory. I will make you. You know how to do business? I've given you that talent. Everything you do works. But now instead of doing it for yourself, I want you to do business for me. You know medicine? Now I want you to be my healer. You know construction? Now I want you to build for me. The things that we learn, the, the, the talents, the things, the toolbox, if you will, that we have in life, God begins to, nothing is wasted in the Lord. He simply begins to apply it in fresh and new and vital ways. And this is what he was doing with Peter. He was saying, follow me and I will make you not a fisher of fish, but a fisher of of men. And the Bible says that Peter and Andrew left their nets and followed. Matthew 4.20, they immediately left their nets and followed him. And you know, in some ways, this looks like the end of the story. Because here they are, Peter and Andrew, Jesus calls, they hear the call, they respond to it, they leave their nets, they leave their boat, they follow Jesus. But I want you to notice something. They left their nets, but they didn't destroy their nets. They didn't sell the boat. They didn't take it out a little ways from shore and sink it. They didn't take the nets and throw them overboard. They simply brought the boat to shore, and maybe they didn't even think about it. Let me ask you a question this morning. How many times have you made a decision to follow God? but you left a contingency plan in place? I'm going to follow God. I'm going to make that decision. And Peter and, Je and Andrew legitimately followed the Lord. I mean, they, they, he left their, what they were doing. They went. But they had this other over here that they held on to. You keep a contingency plan in place just in case something doesn't work out. Yeah, I'll give up drugs, but you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kind of take these and bury these somewhere or hide these, this stuff somewhere so that, you know what? When I get into that situation, and, you know, maybe it'll never happen, but I'll, I have something to go back to. I'm not really going to leave my nets. I'm going to leave them. But they're there just in case. Next three years, Jesus is basically calling Peter to leave a boat. And Jesus even uses the very thing that he calls Peter from to minister from. I mean, he takes a boat. The disciples are there. He sets it out a little way so he can preach to the multitudes. Jesus puts his disciples in a boat. He takes them onto the, the, the sea. A storm comes up and Jesus rebukes and calms the storm. They're in a boat. Peter, Jesus comes walking on the water. He says, Peter, come to me. Get out of the boat. Step on the water. How many of you know that Jesus can use the very thing that he is calling us from for his honor, for his glory? And you know what? He can even utilize our gifts, utilize our talents in spite of the fact that we still have contingency plans and we still have nets that we haven't given up on and we still have boats that we could go back to if we really wanted to. Maybe he's used you in many great ways in spite of your humanness. What that means to me is that we don't have to be perfect. He's asking us. He's calling us. But Jesus can get glory out of us even when we're less than stellar. And when everything goes wrong for Peter, when everything goes wrong, he goes back to the boat. The crucifixion has happened. Peter has denied Jesus. The other disciples have, 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 have left and, and, and scattered and Peter hangs in there for a while. 
But he goes back to his boat when everything, he, go, he goes back to something he knows how to do. He goes back to the nets that Jesus had called him from. It says in John 21, 3, Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. Now that's Peter's way of saying, you know what? I'm just going to go get drunk. I'm just going to go get stoned. I'm just going to go get high. I'm just going to go do what I know how to do and forget all this church stuff and forget all this following Jesus stuff and I'm just going to go and leave. And Peter gives up on it. He says, I'm going fishing. And his disciples, the disciples, some of them around him, and they said, you know what? We're going with you too. And they all went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night, it says they caught nothing. Now remember, these are fishermen. These people know how to fish. And they caught nothing. So let me ask you a deeper question this morning. Have you ever gone back to something that you know God called you from? Have you ever gone back to a habit that you know God delivered you from? Have you ever gone back to a relationship that you know wasn't of God, that God called you from? Have you ever gone back? That's what Peter is doing. He went back and you give up on the call. And really, this whole passage is about the patience of God. God is invested in each of us. He spent three years with Peter. How many years has he spent with you? How much time and energy and effort has God invested into your life to prepare you for what is ahead? And you may not understand it yet, and you may not get it yet, and you may not even be responding to his call at this point, but he has prepared you line upon line, precept upon precept. He's put in your life what you're going to need if you will be obedient to his call. He's given you that opportunity. And here comes Jesus. He's walking on the shore. And Peter and Andrew and there's other disciples, they go. See, just because you leave Jesus doesn't mean Jesus leaves you. Have you ever noticed that once you make a decision for Jesus, it's, it's hard to go back. You can do it, but you know that there's a call on your life that you're missing. And there's some people here that have tried to go back. You've tried to ignore the call of God on your life. And the Lord is taking you and he's abruptly saying, wait a minute. I'm calling you. Hey, follow me. And he calls Peter again. He says, hey, have you any food out there? That's Jesus' way of saying, hey, how's it working for you? <laughs> you caught anything yet? How's that working for you? You tried to go back? How's that working for you? And in that moment, Jesus does what he did the first time. Throw your net on the other side of the boat. And they caught a whole bunch of fish. And in that moment, Jesus gave Peter a choice. He gave Peter a choice. Go back to what you used to be and you might find success. Go back to the life that you used to have and you might make it. Go back to what I've called you from or come and follow me. And in that moment, three years after the original call, Peter made the choice to become a disciple. He'd been in training before, he'd, been, he'd seen Jesus do things, but he had to come to the end of himself. And in that moment, he left the boat. The Bible says he, he took off his clothes, if you will. He, 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 he swam to shore. He left the nets. And maybe most importantly, he left the whole catch of fish. You see, the Lord 
had given him success. It wasn't about calling him from nothing. It was about calling him from what he was desiring to see happen. Just about the time that Peter gets that catch of a lifetime, it's coming in, it's there. Jesus says, come, and Peter is given a choice. Will you leave what I'm calling you from, or are you going to stay in it? It wasn't a calling from nothing. It was a call from success, from what he had been seeking to do. And Peter made that choice. And he came to Jesus and he never went back. We do not find another time in the New Testament that I can see where Peter goes back and is preaching from a boat or using a boat or casting nets or anything. The next time we begin to see Peter, he's preaching and he's actually doing what Jesus originally called him to do. He's fishing for men. He's preaching the inaugural sermon of the church in the book of Acts and he's saying, if you will come, this Jesus that you crucified is both Lord and Savior. He becomes the chief apostle. And he's fishing for men. How about you this morning? Are you ready to follow the call of God? Not just hear it, but follow it. Are you ready to make a difference in someone else's life for the kingdom of God's sake? For the sake of Jesus, are you willing to lay down what you want to do? Lay down your opinions? Lay down the nets? Whatever that means to you. Are you willing to lay that down? And Jesus says, come. He calls, follow me. Are you willing to make that decision? Once and for all, to declare that I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I have decided. It's a decision. It may be a very hard choice. We want it both ways. But at that core decision, it's a matter of saying, Jesus, you are everything. You're all I want. You're all I need. I believe 2017 is a year to finally leave behind our nets. Some of you have been struggling with this decision for a number of years. You know God has put things in you. He's put gifts. He's put talents. He's put passion. He's put things in you, a call that you have responded to and went back from, responded to, and, and let lie. I believe that many of us here in this room have been called to make a difference. And I believe this is the year to join together and see this happen. To start building upon what we're already doing. I think there's some very good things. But there's people that God wants us to reach out to, to minister to. And I believe we need to reach out and begin to utilize the things that God is calling us into with a focus on connecting people to Jesus and connecting people to this body of restoration. It's going to take all of us working together. God may be calling some of you to lead a small group, some of you to start a ministry, some of you to be involved in discipleship, some of you to begin to just to grow. He, he, he's not calling you to lead anything. He's saying, look, you need to, to be discipled. It's time to get on with it. But for all of us, it's going to take an individual decision to drop our nets and follow him. What's your calling? Are you following Jesus in that call? What's your passion? Are you pursuing that passion for Christ? My desire is to see each of us becoming and experiencing all that God has created us for. And I believe that God is calling us to build a body that reflects his glory. That walks out his power and his presence and makes a difference in people's lives. And I believe that this year, 2007, is the year that we begin to do that together. It's your year. Let's stand together. If you need to make that decision this morning,
to follow the call of God. And maybe it's an initial decision to follow Jesus, that you don't know him as your Lord and Savior. You've heard about him. And maybe you've studied a little bit, and you have this kind of philosophical, theological understanding of what you believe about Jesus or don't believe about Jesus. Let me tell you something. You're not going to find Jesus in a philosophy book. You're going to find Jesus because you respond to his spirit drawing you into relationship. You're going to find Jesus when you respond to him. And somebody here needs to respond to the call of God. He's calling you into relationship with him. And your heart just started beating a little bit harder. And you know, in your spirit, you know, in your inner person, you know that he's calling to you and he wants you to come to him. And what I want you to do, if you're that person, I want you to come to one of these altars. Just come, you can stand up here, you can kneel here. And someone will come and pray with you and introduce you to the Savior of the world, but also to your Savior. To the Lord of the universe and to your Lord. Follow me, he says. And I will make you into more than you could even think or imagine. Follow me. Will you follow Jesus this morning? And maybe you know the Lord. And you know that he's called you. But you've never really responded. You've heard the call. But you never left the boat. You never dropped your nets. His call is still there. He's very patient. The gifts and the calling of God, they're irrevocable. When he calls, it's a call. It's not about making a deal. It's not about saying, will you do this? It's, it's saying, you know what? This is what I'm calling you to do. Now follow me. And if you need to reaffirm that call or say, you know what? Yes, Lord. Maybe you just need to say, yes, Lord, this morning. I will follow you, whatever that means. It doesn't matter anymore. I've decided to follow you, Jesus. I'm not going to turn back. Maybe you've been going back and forth and maybe you just simply got fed up with church or with church people, with life or whatever it was and you went back to the very thing that God called you from. And the Lord's come and walking this morning and he's saying, come, hey, how's that working for you? I have so much better for you. So many more things to do in you and through you come hey follow me follow me and you need to make that decision again to say yes lord whatever that means to you say yes lord i will follow you no turning back no turning back as we worship I want to invite you to come. If you need to respond to God this morning, if he's calling you to respond to God, come. We'll pray with you and minister to you. The Lord has need of each of us. Father, I pray that you indeed give us ears to hear what you're speaking to us. And Holy Spirit, I release you to minister to this group of your sons and daughters. And your blessing and anointing and calling would go forth in this place in Jesus name let's respond to the Lord